Fellow St. Lucians, following my address on Sunday, and having listened to the Prime Minister's address on Monday evening, I feel compelled to highlight some lingering concerns by the official opposition about the government's approach to the COVID-19 issue. Before I do so, let me commend the Prime Minister for adhering to the protocols on COVID-19 when he felt unwell and self-isolating yesterday. We are all relieved that his COVID-19 test result was negative and we wish him a speedy recovery. As political leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, I want to call on all St. Lucians to refrain from wishing ill health on anyone or believing that anyone wants COVID-19 to destroy St. Lucia. This cannot be our way as a civilized people. In this vein, I ask that we wish everyone in quarantine and self-isolation well, and my thoughts go out to our own sister Emma Hippolyte. I first want to reiterate that the St. Lucia Labour Party is fully committed to a one-nation harmonious approach to fighting the threat of COVID-19. We continue to urge the Prime Minister not to politicize the national effort and we pledge once again to uphold the spirit of bipartisanship. In this regard, we are pleased that we have been invited to participate in joint meetings. However, final decisions are made at cabinet level and we are obviously not represented there. Many recommendations and ideas have been shared with the government over the last few days. For the benefit of all citizens, we feel obliged to make public the opposition's approach to dealing with some of the pertinent issues. The Prime Minister has stated that he is taking his guidance from PAO, WHO, CAFA and from the local Ministry of Health. We have no issues with that approach. However, there are other countries which do the same but are proactive even though in many instances they have as few proven cases as ours or no known cases. Our country cannot afford to pay the price of being late in our decision making. We must act with haste, always to protect our people. We believe that the Prime Minister may still be in the mood of defining the problem and speaking around the critical issues which we must face. We need to hear a definitive path that we must all follow. The Labour Party believes, as a matter of policy, that St. Lucia needs to be proactive as the situation deserves a sense of great urgency. While we do not doubt the authority of the experts who have told us that we are prepared, we want to caution that it is better that we are over-prepared. We cannot lose if we are over-prepared, but we can regret if we are only just prepared. We must prepare for the worst and we will be better able to confront whatever reality that comes our way. I therefore want to make some specific suggestions. We must not continue to host NEMAC meetings with almost a hundred persons in the room and who happen to be the key decision makers in St. Lucia. More so, this grouping meets every week and is the major entity leading the fights. In any event, this is against the cause for responsible social distancing. We repeat our call for a lean, mean, rapid response task force, which can meet regularly and at short notice to lead the national fight against the virus. The composition of such a task force could be limited to heads of key agencies along with representatives of the government and opposition. We should not wait for the first evidence of in-country transmission of the virus to institute aggressive social distancing measures. By then, it may have spread unnecessarily and uncontrollably. Consider instituting a ban on places where the public assembles, or as a first step, set a limit on the maximum numbers who should be allowed to congregate publicly, at least for a period of 14 days in the first instance. Let us undertake an extensive public education campaign in both English and Creole to ensure that all citizens are fully briefed on how to respond to the threat of the virus and what to expect over the next few months. 
Whilst we discourage the spread of rumors, the first responsibility is on us to give out honest and transparent information to discourage speculation and help fight misinformation and panic. For example, if we do not see where the infected person stayed and what measures we are taking, then staff at all hotels will start speculating that it may be their place of work. Our citizens must not be led to become distrustful of the information that is disseminated. We need a special education campaign for the youth. From available evidence, they are the ones least likely to be affected, but they are, one, but they are the ones who are most mobile, active and fearless. They are most likely to be interacting on playing fields, blocks, bars and streets, but all return home afterwards where they can infect the older members of their families. They must be strongly encouraged to follow the advice and bulletins issued to avoid further risk. It is not enough to say that once you are under 60 and have no underlying conditions, then it will just be a mild flu if affected. We need to be more consistent and clear in our messaging. We must announce a preliminary package of benefits to workers who will be displaced by the economic fallout. Already, hotels are closing and small businesses are feeling the pressure. The government must not allow individual hotels and businesses alone to determine how workers will be compensated. It has to be a national consensus. As a minimum and as a matter of urgency, the Prime Minister must make some policy statements on mortgage deferrals, higher salary sick pay, pay for workers laid off, and help for self-employed persons, example, taxi drivers, vendors, and people who work in the tourism industry. The people are anxious and cannot wait for the budget, which will not be presented until the end of April. We must announce a policy statement on the payment of utility bills now. Low-income workers must, must be given the comfort that their water, electricity, internet, and phone will not be disconnected during this emergency period. We must announce plans for workers at the civil service to allow these persons who can work from home to do so. This must also take into account parents who will need to be at home to care for their children as they are now required to be home also. We must consider a deferment of installments on income tax due by large and small businesses for this year. This will give them much needed cash flow to help pay their workers who may not be at work. The opposition remains willing and able to be part of the consultative process that will ensure that St. Lucia is ready, proactive, and places the health, safety, and welfare of the people of St. Lucia first and foremost. I think.